So I'd start this project um, by doing the outline. Um, I've obviously just done a small patch of fur to show you today, um, simply because otherwise it'd take me a really long time to show you the whole thing. Um, so I transferred my outline onto my paper. Uh, for this I used Strathmore Bristol Vellum 300 series paper. And um, I then just used a bit of uh, blue tack, white blue tack to soften some of the pencil edges as I go along so that they're not so strong. Um, so for the first, once I've got that sorted, as you can see here, uh, I've got a grey Pablo pencil and I'm just marking in the um, black markings so I know where they are. Um, I'm basically just doing a, a very simple wash with my pencil going backwards and forwards uh, with my strokes. Uh, and I'm using um, a pressure two out of five. Uh, all, all my pressures uh, when I talk throughout this will be out of five. So this is using a very pretty light hand really. Um, and uh, my pencil's got a very sharp point. Um, I don't want to be pressing too hard on the paper in the early stages um, because otherwise I will fill up the tooth of the paper too quickly. Um, and as you will see throughout this project that uh, I use an awful lot of layers uh, to create the realistic effect that I'm looking for when I do my animals. So, um, as you can see, uh, I'm just I've just finishing off doing the first marking here, uh, and I shall then do the exact same thing on all the other um, black markings. As you can see, um, I've speeded the video up here. Um, simply because the entire video would take two and a, two and a quarter hours um, and I wanted to make this into a short video to allow people to have time to actually watch it. So I'm continuing to do the same thing. Uh, I'm just using the blue tack to soften um, some of the outlines and then I'm continuing with that light pressure again during the wash um, to just mark where they are so I don't lose them um, as I'm progressing through building up the the sort of yellowy orangey hair. Um, with this wash, like I said, using a light pressure, but you don't need to be too precious about it. This is simply um, a marking in exercise um, so that we don't lose where we are. Um, so you don't don't worry if you can see bits of white uh, through at this stage, it doesn't matter. Um, we will fill in the tooth of the paper as we continue along. So the next thing I'm going to do is I want to create uh, an underwash on the um, yellowy orangey part of the, the hair. Uh, and to do this, I'm using an olive brown 10% luminance pencil by Karen Dash. And again, I'm doing the whole kind of washing in where I rub my pencil backwards and forwards kind of in, of in little um, oval shapes, really. Um, and I'm just getting rid of some of the bright white of the paper. Um, with this... Um, I am thinking about direction of hair as well. Um, so look at your reference photo when you're working on one and um, look at the direction that the hair um, goes in and how it goes around the contours of the body. Um, that's very important because if you don't look at that, then it won't end up um, looking realistic in the end. So as you can see, I'm just... Um, Continuing to work backwards and forwards, um, again changing direction of my pencil to suit the contours that I'm working with. Uh, as it is such a, a light pencil, um, you may not obviously be able to see it terribly well on your screen at the moment. Um, and what I shall do is I create a, a second pass over, as it were, with this colour, um, just to help 
start to define um, some of the areas a little bit more. Um, it's really creating a road map at this stage of the picture um, that then you can build up with. If you haven't got the um, things in the right place at the beginning um, and the direction of hair in the right place at the beginning, it makes it more difficult as you go along. So this is the beginning ugly stage as I call it. Um, <laughs> so don't worry what your picture looks like. Um, I promise it will get better as you go along. The key uh, to success with coloured pencils when drawing on paper such as the Strathmore Bristol Vellum is to start off with your lightest colours first and then build up to your darkest colours. As you will see as we progress um, through this video I will talk a little bit about uh, some of the colours I've chosen and why I've chosen them um, and how I build up the depth of the, the black. At the moment this is simply the mapping in stage as it were uh, using some light tones. So the next pencil that I've chosen is the Brown Ochre 10% Luminance Pencil and as you can see um, it's still a very light pencil, it's just a different shade to the one we were using previously, um, it's a bit got a bit of a warmer tone to it um, and what I'm doing is I'm still using the washing motion going backwards and forwards um, but as you will see I'm using short strokes um, to represent the hair because the hair is fairly short. Uh, I use longer strokes uh, in the places where the hair is a little bit longer um, and I'm continuing to look at that direction of hair growth that we talked about earlier. Um, the key to the way that I work is that I like to gradually um, build up the colours so I won't suddenly jump from a really light colour um, to a darker colour at the beginning stages um, because it's so important to um, build up those layers because that's what creates the depth in the fur that we're trying to achieve. Um, again if this is still quite a, a loose stage these these first few layers um, obviously they are important um, but as you will see I'm not being precise in creating any individual hairs at all I'm simply just blocking in areas uh, of hair um, and I'm also I'm not going over every single area that I went in um, with the previous layer I'm leaving out the lightest lightest bits of hair um, to, to come come through so it's not a question of filling in every tiny little gap um, that's not what we want to do at all it is literally just uh, imagine you are stroking the animal think about that hair um, and for me it, it, the pencil is almost like I am stroking the hair of the animal um, that that's how I think of it anyway and you just want to it, just keep going just gradually with the wash um, remembering to leave the, the lightest lightest uh, bits to shine through um, and again if you're not being quite so precise you will find uh, that your pencil obviously is skipping over um, some of the, the paper because of the, the nature of the paper um, it's not a smooth paper it's got tiny little ridges and holes in it so um, if you're kind of running across in this manner you won't be filling in the, the little bits of the tooth of the paper so some of the lighter colours will be shining shining through. Okay so now I've used the olive brown 10% and the brown ochre 10% luminance pencils I'm going to continue to uh, gradually build up this um, lighter fur and the next pencil that I'm using is the Burnt Ochre 10% Luminance Pencil and I'm doing exactly the same thing that it was before. I'm using a very light pressure 
I wanted to and I'm washing it on sort of making little tufts of hair almost is the best way I can describe it um, and it's just the back and forward little motions remembering that I'm working to the length of the hair so I'm not doing big long strokes uh, in most of it because uh, it's it's not massive long strokes of hair um, and you can see that well hopefully you can see because it's still quite pale at the moment but that um, I'm still following the line of direction that the hair is um, growing in and uh, this colour is a bit it's warmer it's more of a uh, an orangey kind of colour so starting to bring in a little bit of warmth um, and a little bit more um, depth to the fur. Um, what, what I did then was that uh, I moved on to using the Burnt Sienna 10% Luminance Pencil which is more of a pinker colour. Um, this is one of my favourite pencils actually um, and again I'm just repeating the exact same process. I'm not going over every single area, um, I'm leaving the, the lighter patches uh, of hair to shine through and because you're not going over every single area religiously you'll see uh, little bits of lighter colour um, shining through this is what helps to create the the depth of the the fur as it were um, so keep persevering with this this bit until you've covered the whole of this uh, area you will notice um, that I will go back over certain areas. Um, instead of using a heavier pressure at this stage, because um, I want to obviously leave enough tooth in the paper for my subsequent layers, um, if I want to slightly uh, darken an area or have it a bit more pinker in this case, um, I will just go back over that area using um, a light pressure still it just if you go back over it it adds uh, another layer of color and you'll see it uh, standing out a little bit more you'll notice uh, that underneath some of the the black markings um, I'm doing a, a few layers here um, because that's uh, it, it, it's quite uh, a pinky sort of colour underneath um, the markings. It's where the uh, hair, the dark hair, is overlapping um, with the underneath the, the lighter coloured hair, and it, it would create this um, darker orangey pinky patch. Okay, so I'm now going to go back into looking at the, the dark markings to start building up the depth there. And uh, at this time, I've got a cool grey 70% Prismacolor pencil. And it is literally a case of just washing um, over the top of the markings where they were before. Um, you'll see, obviously, I'm using that kind of um, oval circular kind of back and forward shaped movement across it. Um, again, always following the, the direction of the, the, the hairline as it, as it grows. You will um, notice throughout this video that I will switch between doing a few la layers of pencil on the yellowy orangey kind of hair and then perhaps one or two layers on the um, actual dark markings. This is so that I can actually build up um, the tones in both areas, kind of keeping them fairly even as I go along. Um, I, the reason I don't like to do the whole of the dark markings first, using lots of layers, is because I find I end up dragging the colour um, into the lighter areas too much. I'm just too messy for that. Um, some artists will, will get the depth first um, so they know um, tonally when they're working around it. Uh, just for me, I find that I, it just doesn't work very well for me, so I prefer to do it um, in this way. Uh, 
Okay, so what I did next was I wanted to start um, actually getting some more defined hair um, within the piece. We've been working on just the, the washes and working out um, the tones, as it were, leaving the, the lighter bits shining through. For this, I'm going to um, do two layers. Uh, the first, I'm using a beige Pablo pencil. Um, again, I'm using probably a slightly harder pressure than I was on the underlayers, but not, not much. Um, and I'm just working on uh, defining some more of the hair, as you'll see. Now, hair does not grow in a uniform way on a big cat. Um, what I mean by that is he's not just had his hair brushed, so his hair is not sleek and straight and perfect every single strand. Um, the hair will go in, although it's going um, in the same sort of direction as each other, it, each hair won't be exactly aligned. So when you're doing this, you'll just slightly alter the angle of your um, pencil lines uh, for, for the hairs. This, this will create a more of a realistic um, effect. And it, it's, it's only a slight... Um, variations as it were but um that that really makes all the difference okay so i've now moved on to using the 30 percent french gray prismacolor pencil um this is actually quite a similar color to the beige pablo that we've just used um the difference being though that the the prismacolor is a lot softer um and as you will see um if you look on the screen that uh, you can see the pablos are quite um, more refined lines and while obviously I want to build this up I also wanted to, to soften them off slightly which is why I used um, a softer pencil to go over the top of them um, just because obviously his hair it does look uh, quite soft and fluffy in places um, and uh, I obviously wanted to, to, to capture this within the, the piece. Okay, so now I'm moving back um, to working on these dark markings. Um, for me, I have certain particular favorite pencils that I like to use um, when I build up really deep, dark black colors. Um, if you just used uh, a black on its own, you would find that it isn't such a rich, deep black and it kind of looks a little bit dead almost. Um, whereas when you add um, other colours to it, it just gives it more of a richness and more of a vibrancy. Um, so in this case, I'm using an indigo blue Prismacolor pencil and I'm just uh, doing a combination of washing in the the larger areas and then um, I'm just starting now to do a few individual um, strokes in some of the more refined areas. Um, you will find when you're working on these markings that um, you, you will kind of expand them out into the lighter colours. Um, as, as we progress you'll see that you'll start uh, gradually taking um, some individual hairs uh, with your pencil out into these lighter colours because um, obviously it's not just a, a solid block of hair um, the hairs will overlap with each other so we, we want to obviously build up that um, effect so now I've moved on to using uh, the black grape prisma colour pencil um, I really like this pencil. I think it's a, it has a really nice um, colour to it and I find it really useful um, for building up the dark markings um, in my animal drawings. And literally, I'm just repeating the same process that I did with the indigo blue a moment ago um, of a combination of washing in some of the bigger areas and then some more refined lines um, towards the edges. Uh, I'm using probably about a pressure two um, when I'm covering the markings. 
and I'm also um, adding a small amount to the yellow, yellow orangey fur just um, in the slightly darker places or around uh, the black markings and for that I'm using a pressure one. Okay so for the next three layers I'm going to go back into building up the yellow, orangey, pinky kind of fur hair and uh, the first layer I'm actually going to go back and use a colour that I've already previously used and that's the Burnt Sienna 10% Luminance. Um, you'll see that I'm starting to stroke on more individual hairs um, now mostly. Um, when I do this it, it's, I'm literally just doing a stroke on the paper lifting my pencil up and going back to do another stroke so I'm thinking about where the hair is actually growing out of the, the leopard and then um, obviously going down so that's why I'm starting uh, at the top each stroke and going down towards towards the bottom um, you will find naturally that you tend to be a little bit more heavy-handed uh, when you put your pencil down then when you lift it up so it's it's a good idea um, to mostly stroke in the direction that the hair is actually growing you will also find um, as I mentioned that I've used this color previously and um, throughout any work that I do, um, I will go back and reuse some of the same colours. The reason for this being um, is that when you've got um, other colours underneath, it will react differently, um, the colour will, so it won't be as pure as if you were putting it on uh, plain white paper. Um, and just building up these layers and using some of the same colours really creates the depth to the fur. Okay so for the next layer I'm using a violet grey luminance pencil again using uh, a fairly light uh, pressure, a pressure one to two and I'm literally doing the same thing that I did uh, a moment ago with the burnt sienna and just building up the depth of hair using um, individual strokes um, and then the patch between um, the rosette shape marking um, where it's darker I will be adding um, a few more washes in there where the hair is more clumped together and not quite so um, refined. So as we're using a um, purpley grey colour uh, you need to be mindful uh, about where you are adding this colour. Um, so for example on the top right of my picture I know that that particular patch of hair is more in shadow than some of the other areas um, and it, this is a good colour for now starting to really kind of build up um, some of those darker patches uh, of fur which you'll find you get um, on the underside of the uh, black markings um, and also between um, that rosette shaped marking. Um, you will obviously put a bit in other, other places um, it's to emphasise uh, the underneath hair as it were um, and allow the lighter um, and highlighted hairs to, to stand out more. Okay, so I'm literally just repeating the same thing again, but using a brownish beige pablo going over those areas that I did with the violet grey. Okay, so I'm now going to go back to working on those dark markings again. This time I'm using a Castle Earth Luminance pencil, which I think is probably one of my most favourite brown pencils. Um, I just I love the the tone of it and I find it works uh, really well um, for a lot of my um, big cat pictures and 
particularly when I'm building up the um, dark marking. So I'm just going to repeat what I did earlier, go back over them with um, some washes and some individual strands uh, starting to come out of the, the dark areas. Um, like I said before, this is to uh, stop having uh, a hard edge on the edge of the markings because obviously uh, the way that uh, the hair is growing is it's all overlapping. Um, I'm also adding uh, a little bit using a very light pressure uh, in between that um, rosette marking uh, just in some of those uh, darker areas of hair there. Um, you may remember uh, in one of our first layers we actually used the brown ochre 10%. Well, what I want to do now is actually increase the intensity of the colour. So I'm going to use the brown ochre 50% luminance, still using a, a very light pressure. But I'm going to be stroking on um, the, the hairs uh, in, to create some warmth um, to the leopard's fur. Um, so I'll be adding more in those particularly warmer areas and um, a little less in some of the cooler or highlighted areas. Okay, so for the next layer I'm actually going to go back and use my uh, Burnt Sienna 10% Luminance Pencil. Uh, again, using um, a fairly uh, light pressure. Um, I'm going to do a mix of um, stroking the fur on like we did a moment ago but also in some areas I'm using more of a, um, a small scumbling kind of wash is the best way I can describe it um, so it's almost like doing little clumps of uh, hair where I don't want the hair quite so uh, defined Okay, so now I've done uh, a couple of layers of warmer uh, colours. Uh, I'm going to go back to doing some cooler colours within the fur, uh, and I'll be using my trusty old violet grey luminance pencil again uh, with a fairly uh, soft pressure, probably a pressure of two, um, and a sharp pencil. Um, again, I'm using a mixing of uh, stroking the hair on and also um, kind of scumbling little strokes uh, in the more clumpy hairs uh, but this time I'm focusing on the cooler areas um, and starting to define around some of the, the highlights underneath to uh, help make them stand out a little bit more. I wanted to start building up uh, some of the darker uh, hair in between that um, rosette marking and uh, for this I'm using a sepia 50% um, and I'm just literally doing small little strokes uh, and trying to leave out some of the highlighted areas. Um, don't panic too much if you don't maintain all of these. Uh, because later on we will use um, a couple of different erasers and I'll show you how to, to lift out some hair um, where, it, where it's become too too dark. Um, also I think just a few little bits uh, in um, some other areas just around the, the black markings um, just to bring a bit more depth to them. Okay, so now you can really see the fur starting to take shape and it's beginning to actually look like what you would like it to. Um, I'm going to go back to the dark markings and I'm really going to concentrate the next few layers on building up the intensity there. So I'm going to use uh, some of the colours that I used previously to start with. So I've got the Indigo Blue Prismacolor Pencil and um, with all these layers I'm going to be using a mid pressure, so uh, a three out of five. Um, once I've done the indigo blue, I'm used the black grape 
written the colour paints were doing exactly the same thing going over the markings with the washes um, and some individual hairs um, coming out from the, the sides just a little bit. Um, also with the black grape I'm going to use a slightly uh, less pressure but um, in the middle of that rosette shape I'm going to add a little bit um, blending out some of the dark markings there just to start building uh, that intensity there. Uh, once I've done the black grape I've used the black Prismacolor um, again with a mid pressure and um, whenever I uh, use uh, a black uh, you'll see that it's, it does not create uh, such a, a deep rich black on its own but I like to include a layer of it in my work um, because I just think it adds, adds a little something to the black. Um, once I've done that layer then I've used the Blue Violet Derwent pencil. Um, this is uh, an oil pencil rather than a wax pencil uh, and I found that actually adding um, a layer of the oil uh, onto the wax helps just to um, stop so much of that kind of sheen occurring on it as I'm working um, and also this is a really nice colour um, and it just helps to add add the depth um, to it. I've then gone back over the violet blue uh, with another quick layer of the indigo blue uh, before moving on to uh, the castle earth luminance pencil. Um, having a balance between the purples, the blues and the browns mixing them together helps to create that rich uh, deep colour that we're, we're looking to achieve. Okay so I'm going to move back to the um, infuriant sort of hair and um, what I want to do in the next few layers is actually warm some of the, it up. Um, so first of all I'm using a burnt ochre 50% luminance pencil and at this time I'm not uh, striking on the individual hairs, I'm literally just doing um, washes in places uh, particularly those warmer areas, um, just using short um, back and forwards kind of uh, oval shape motion with my pencil. Um, I'm not putting so much into the, the, the cooler areas uh, of hair, um, just the, the warmer areas. Um, with these uh, washes I'm using a fairly light pressure still, around a pressure 2 out of 5. So for the next layer I'm doing exactly the same thing uh, with warming up the, the hair um, but this time I'm using a burnt sienna 10% luminance which we've already used uh, a couple of times throughout so it's a lovely kind of pinky colour. Once I've um, done that and added some warmth uh, to the hair, I just wanted to um, use a slightly darker colour, but with a similar kind of shade to the burnt sienna 10%. Um, and so I've got a sienna derwent light bark pencil, um, still using about a pressure 2 out of 5, but this time I'm not washing this colour on, I'm doing um, more individual. Uh, hairs. Um, most of the marks I'm making are around the black markings in um, the hair where it's uh, the lighter hair is overlapping onto the darker hair um, and then just a, a few strands uh, in places um, in the, the lighter hair just where it's a little bit more shadowed. Okay, so now for the really fun bit, um, the electric razor. Um, I have a Derwent electric uh, razor, um, which I personally really love using. Um, for this section, uh, what I'm actually doing is I'm using it to lift out um, highlights in the fur, but 
soft highlights in the fur. Um, what I actually do uh, is I make sure on a separate piece of paper, first of all, um, that uh, I kind of create a point uh, on the end of my uh, eraser uh, and make sure it's also um, clean. Uh, obviously I do this by electric erasing it as it were and kind of just moulding it into a bit of a shape by angling the uh, eraser. Um, once I've done that then I use a very very light pressure uh, on the actual drawing to, to lift out the hairs um, and I would actually suggest having a bit of a practice of this on a separate piece of paper before you try by doing this on a, a piece of artwork. Um, every so often I will stop and I will make sure my eraser is clean by giving it a bit of a, a spin on a, on a spare piece of paper. Um, otherwise it just starts getting a bit clogged, clogged up. Um, the, the areas, when I'm doing it, you'll see that um, I'm literally, it's like I'm stroking on the hairs in the same way that we did with the um, pencils we've been using and I am literally just doing very little marks and thinking about the direction um, that the hair is lying in um, to use my uh, eraser in that same same way. Um, it's also important to remember exactly the same as with the coloured pencils that um, the hair obviously while going in the same direction as it were around the, the contour of his body um, not every single hair will be like pristine in the same exact same line um, so yeah you just want to vary your hand movements just ever so slightly um, just to, to get that variation uh, in the lines. Um, I then moved on to using a Tombow eraser um, I've got the Tombow mono eraser this is the tiniest eraser ever. Um, it is literally like a pencil. Um, and this is very useful for the more refined hairs um, within, within this fur. So I'm literally just using it to, to draw on some of those um, more highlighted hairs, the lighter hairs. And um, this is particularly useful uh, for drawing them into the black markings. Um, this eraser is absolutely amazing uh, at lifting out the, the really dark uh, pencil um, and to make it lighter to show uh, some of those underneath colours that we had had on there in the first place. Um, you will find that if you are stroking it into the dark markings it, it does get dirty very quickly this eraser because obviously it is so tiny um, so do keep stopping um, and giving it a bit of a clean a separate um, piece of paper or um, if it gets too bad obviously you can just I just trimmed the end off a couple of times with a pair of um, scissors just so I've got a really sharp edge to rip to it and uh, it was nice and clean um, take Take your time over doing this, there is no rush um, when you're using it. Keep checking your reference photo um, just to remind yourself of the direction of the hair, um, how much of the hair is overlapping into those um, dark markings on the right hand side when the lighter hair is overlapping. Um, and that, that's where most of the the, the highlights I'm lifting out with the Tombow are it's uh, those bits into the dark areas. Okay, so now we have lifted out some of the highlights in the hair and created lighter areas. Some of the edges are actually quite harsh and I would like to create a soft overall look to the leopard. So what I I've done is I've used uh, three different uh, colours uh, for the next three layers and I've started with the lightest which I've chosen a uh, Derwent Wheat Pencil. This is a brilliant colour uh, for working with animals uh, and 
I'm using a light to mid pressure uh, over the lighter hairs and I'm just washing gently kind of backwards and forwards around the areas that I've lifted out with the erasers and just softening off some of those edges. It's also useful if you find that you have lifted out too many highlights because um, you can push them back a little bit and also in the hair that's overlapping the dark markings it works well on those those hairs because obviously they're not the brightest because they're covering up the dark underneath but and they just push them back a little bit. So for my next layer I have the Burnt Sienna 10% Luminance Pencil again and I'm going back over the areas that I was working on uh, with the previous pencil but just adding um, a bit more pink to, to areas that I want to make, make a bit pinker and just I'm, I'm doing more stroking of the the hairs on. I'm doing some some washes and some stroking of individual hairs and I may be obviously leaving the, the lightest areas well alone. It's just adding a bit more depth around those highlights just to help make them stand out a little bit So this time I've got the Violet Grey Luminance Pencil again and I am stroking and doing small kind of scumbly wash marks in the, the more in shadowed areas of the, the hair and particularly around some of the dark markings uh, where, where the hair is overlapping. Um, it's also a very useful colour um, just under some of that particularly highlighted uh, fur that I've got in the middle of my piece. Um, just adding little bits under those, just on the ones, the, the, the clumps of hair that I really want to make stand out a little bit more. It's it's a good colour for that because it's, um, it's a deeper colour, um, but not so much so that it looks looks ridiculous, it's quite a natural sort of shade. So for my next layer I have a sepia 50% luminance pencil and I'm applying this using a very light pressure as it's quite a deep colour and this pencil is particularly useful around the black markings and especially underneath them where the dark hair is running into the lighter hair. As you can see I'm doing um, more individual strokes of hair than necessarily many washes and mostly focusing around those black markings. I may put in a few little bits elsewhere but just be very sparing uh, with this pencil because we obviously don't want to make the fur too dark. It's useful as well in that patch of hair in the middle of that rosette shaped marking um, in those darker areas and you can really start to build up the depth of the colour of fur there and add a bit more shaping to the, to the clumps of hair. As you can see the hair is obviously really starting to take some shape now but it still needs some more layers just to complete it off. Um, I felt that it needed to be a little bit warmer still in certain areas so I've got my brown ochre 50% luminance back out and using a fairly light pressure I'm just washing it into some of those warmer areas just to, just to bring them out a little bit more. Um, the thing with 
using uh, a certain colour, for example, is um, I've got uh, an orangey kind of colour here. I find it's obviously looking a bit too orange, and I'd like it to say more pinky. I could go back uh, and use the, the burnt sienna 10% again uh, to counterbalance it. So it's just a question of switching between um, different colours, as it were. And if you feel that it's becoming too much uh, one colour, say too orange, then you can counterbalance it by using uh, the pinks, for example. But for me, I felt that I wanted to have a little bit more um, of a greyer feel in certain areas. So I've got a brown beige Pablo pencil, again using a fairly light pressure, and I'm just um, doing a mixture of kind of little stumbly marks and some individual hairs uh, where, I, where I needed just to push back. Uh, certain areas so that they're not quite so intense uh, with that orangey kind of feel to them. Once I get it to a point where I'm fairly happy with the hair and know that I'll end up just doing um, some tweaky layers afterwards, I get a lighter colour. So in this case, I'm using a French grey 10% Prisma colour pencil. And what I'm doing with it is I'm using a mid pressure, so a 3 out of 5, and I'm using it to blend in any areas of hair that I don't necessarily want um, to be quite so defined, as it were. Um, and using a lighter colour um, instead of uh, a blender, uh, I find it creates a better, a better effect, really. So you're kind of burnishing together some of the, the colours and mixing them together a little bit, which creates a softer, softer feel to the to the piece. You'll see that not only am I using it over the light areas, um, I'm obviously leaving the complete highlighted lightest areas alone, but it's also very useful for um, those mid mid tones uh, of the piece as well. Um, and just it blends some of those colours together and just softens the hair to create um, so it's not got such hard hard lines to it. So once I get to that sort of point in, the, in my work, I stop and I'll have a look and think, right, what do I actually need to do to improve upon this picture and to just really make it pop and just be exactly how I'd like it to be really. So for me, looking at this, I knew I needed to do a bit more work on the dark markings just to make them really deep in their colour. So I've gone back to using the colours that I used previously and I'm doing a wash of the Indigo Blue Prisma colour pencil. This mm. time I'm using a mid pressure for a three out of five, so it's fairly, fairly hard. Um, and I'm literally just doing what I've done in all the other layers on them. I'm just washing it in and a few individual hairs um, over the top in the direction of the hair. I'm then doing the exact same thing as I did a second ago, but this time I've got a black grape Prisma colour pencil using a mid mid pressure around the three, um, just into those dark markings again, just to start bringing a bit more depth to them. And then I'm doing the exact same thing yet again, but this time with the Castle Earth Luminance pencil. Uh, same mid pressure um, and just working up those dark areas. And with this one, you can take it out slightly into the lighter, the lighter areas as well. Um, I'm then repeating the exact same thing, and this time I'm using a Derwent Light Bath 
violet pencil um, with a mid pressure again. Um, I'm also going to be taking a little bit of this violet out into the lighter colours uh, just in places um, to add a bit more depth um, to, the, to the hair and also it will help the, the lighter colours to stand out a little bit more. Okay, so for me these next layers are the finishing touches as it were. I'm looking just to see where I need to add um, more depth to the fur or any areas that I want to push back a little bit um, by using a cooler colour or um, any areas perhaps where the hair needs to be a bit more clumped together you can wash them together using your small kind of wash stroke uh, or anywhere that I need to add any final highlights. Um, I've started off by using a French grey 30% luminance pencil uh, and I'm just using a light to mid pressure uh, and I really wanted just to create a bit more depth to, to the fur really so I'm just adding it in places as you can see just to um, make it look a bit more hair like really. Um, and to help those lighter bits to stand out a little bit more. I then used a light aubergine luminance pencil, which I haven't actually used in this piece before, but I do really like this colour. I think it's a really nice um, purpley colour but it's, it's more of a muted purple. Um, I like to include uh, the purple within the leopard's fur because using a contrasting colour um, when you're building up the sort of under hairs that are more in shadow um, are, are really effective. Uh, I'm mostly working around the dark markings, as you can see. Um, that's where the hair tends to be more overlaid uh, between the two contrasting colours as it were. Uh, I'm using a very light pressure with this colour because obviously I don't want it to become too purple as it were. Okay so continuing to analyse what I wanted to do next I decided that um, I wanted a little bit more definition of uh, some darker hairs coming out of the, the black markings. Um, so I've got a greyish black tableau and I'm using a fairly light uh, pressure still just to stroke on some of those hairs that are uh, a bit more shadowed that are coming out from, from the black markings and also in that rosette, uh, middle of that rosette shape. Um, just defining a few more of those areas and just making them a bit deeper, deeper in colour to create more of a contrast. Looking at my picture at this stage, I felt that some of the more highlighted hairs um, disappeared slightly and I just wanted to, to lift them out a little bit more to create more of a contrast within the fur. For this I'm using the mono eraser and uh, I'm just doing what I did previously with it and just doing little strokes to, to lift out highlights here and there within the, in the fur. I decided at this point that uh, there was a few areas that I really wanted to warm up a little bit um, and get a bit more of that orangey colour in. So I've gone back to using the brown ochre 50% luminance pencil that we had earlier after doing the erasing. And um, yeah, I'm just washing it and stroke, doing some strokes in, in the places where I really want to just um, add that warmth to, to, to the leopard's fur. Um, I haven't gone crazy uh, with the, the, that colour because the leopard I'm drawing is quite muted in tones. It's not a really bright, bright colour. We've then gone on to use the burnt sienna 10% pink colour like we had before 
And again, just using a light pressure, um, I'm just going over some of the areas of fur uh, with the washes and the, the strokes. Um, and it's also quite useful on uh, some of the edges where you've erased. If you, any, you don't want hard lines, you can just gently um, blend, blend them away a little bit on the edges. Um, some of the highlights have obviously left the quite crisp marks in the clumps of fur towards the bottom, um, just because that's the way, that's the point the light is really catching that area. Um, after that, Uh, I've also done a touch of the violet grey luminance in exactly the same way. Um, I then decided there were a few bits I wanted to make just look a bit fluffier really. Um, and the Derwent Electric Eraser is a fab for doing this. So just in a few of those places where I really want the highlights to stand out now. Um, but just look a bit softer and a bit fluffier. Um, I've just used the Electric Eraser for this. To finish off, I just wanted to go back in and soften around some of those uh, areas that I just used the electric eraser on, uh, just to blend them in a little bit more. So for this I've used a French grey 30% luminance pencil. Um, really you can continue with these tweaks um, using the same colours that you've been using uh, as much as you want, um, but I'm going to call this one finished.